Chapter 28, Palma. After dinner, Palma stared at the television, waiting for his food to settle. The news anchors came to the end of the news broadcast. And in finance news, the prices in public car markets have already started dropping in anticipation of the increase in tax rates. All indexes are down. And that's all for today. Such an exciting month ahead, isn't it? The Hope Runners, all three of them, soon finally heading out to find us answers. There had been no news yet of Flora quitting the championship. All talk, as usual, too afraid to commit. Perhaps, Palma thought jokingly, he needed to inform the Hope Runners office, because it's clear she wasn't going to. Palma turned down the volume and got back to his books in his room. His phone was in a corner of his desk. It might as well have been off. The last messages were from Saga and Esper asking him where he was. That didn't matter anymore to Palma. None of it did. Esper, Rulo, Saga, Flora, Mason, his parents, none of them cared about him. He was focusing on himself. He started exercising again and buried himself in his studies. He stirred his cup of tea through the stacks of textbooks on his desk. It swirled like cars in a roundabout. After a short while, his parents knocked and came in. Palma, we need to talk, Clara said. I really need to study, respectfully. Is it important? Palma, it is, Clara said as they sat on his bed. Palma slammed close his books and sighed. What's up? Without skipping a beat, Clara ran into the confrontation. You lied to us, twice. Palma drew back his breath. He had lied when he caught the study and at dinner. What do you mean? He asked. Clara pulled back before unleashing the ultimatum. She didn't even look at Tinu beside her. His father seemed more uneasy about the situation. Clara continued. We will get to the truth, regardless. You have an option, Palma. You tell us the truth or we jail your friends. Palma's eyes widened. Wait, what do you mean? He shifted glances to his father. We tracked your friends while they were doing their business in the Mech Institute servers. I have people on standby ready to take them in their storm drain. We will get the truth from them or we will get the truth from you. It's your choice. Palma's habitual instinct reared itself. Help them at all costs. Tell the truth. It will keep them from harm. But then he remembered what he had to do. He instead suppressed this reaction. Take them, Palma answered. Tinu was taken aback, his eyes dancing behind his tiny round glasses, unable to find an anchor. Clara, resolute, picked up her phone and called a number. It's ringing, she gestured to Palma, as if that would make Palma change his decision. While it rang, disgust grew in him. His parents, willing to jail his friends? What were they hiding? He shook his head in disbelief. The respect he had for them seemed to drain by the second. Are you really doing this? Tinu shuffled uneasily. The ringing stopped and Clara pulled the phone to her ear. Hi, yes, proceed. Catch and throw them into the cells. An ultimatum. And just like that, they were captured. Absurd. He never expected his parents to do something like this. Palma knew that he didn't understand himself, but now he didn't understand his parents either. Enough. He got up with a poker face and started packing clothes and books into a duffel bag. Soon, his parents caught on to what was happening. Palma? Tinu asked, standing up to stop him from packing. Palma pulled away from him. Dad, did you just sit there and let mom do this? Palma said with an incredulous chuckle. She's right, you know. You are spineless. Tinu just ambled about in a daze. Clara stood and approached her son. Leave me, Palma shouted. You really thought I'd just accept you giving me an ultimatum like that? Are you insane? I'm done living under this roof. You treat me like a child. Palma, you did this to yourself. You hacked the Mech Institute. Don't pretend like you are a goody two-shoes here. Palma rolled up his cartoonish bed sheets and roped it onto his bag. He turned around and slowly approached his parents. Seems like that runs in the family, he said, walking past them. Palma, come back here! Clara shouted after him. There's so much more at stake that you don't know about. You could ruin everything. Maybe I'd know if you treated me like an adult and actually told me things. You hid the report from us, from Dad. You were working on it in secret. What else have you been hiding? Tinu stepped in. 
Clara, Palma, please. We can work this out, please. Palma realized that the way his father was dealing with the situation meant that he had been hiding something too. He didn't know what, but he tested the water. You've also been hiding things, haven't you, Dad? Tinu didn't respond. Of course. This is insane, Palma said as he slung his bag on his shoulder and headed towards the exit. Palma opened the door and waited to hear if his parents would share any parting words. Clara did. You won't survive on your own. Ridiculous. Palma slammed the door behind him and rushed into the city on his own. He didn't know whether it was the right choice, but he just wanted out. In the past, this uncertainty would have caused him anxiety. But for the first time, it felt right. It felt empowering. They were definitely hiding something if they went to that extreme to capture his friends. He needed to find out. But first, he had a flight to catch.